欢迎大家。Welcome to today's press briefing on COVID-19. We have with us three speakers: Under Secretary for Health, Dr. Libby Li. Principal Medical and Health Officer of the Communicable Disease Branch of the Center for Health Protection, Dr. Albert Au, and Dr. Larry Lee, Chief Manager, Integrated Clinical Services of the Hospital Authority. Dr. Lee will have the floor. Hong Kong citizens, friends of the media, good afternoon. In today's press briefing, Dr. Au will first brief you on the latest situation of COVID-19 and the latest development of COVID both locally and globally. Next, Dr. Lee will give you an update on the provision of public health care services under the hospital authority and adjustment of services. Next, I will talk about adjustments to our anti-epidemic measures. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to dispel certain misunderstandings in relation to uh, our public health care strategy. Dr. Ao. First, I'll give you an update on the latest COVID situation in the past week. This chart shows the latest daily number of cases. The red one shows PCR positive results, the green bars. RAT results. And in the past week, we have registered an increase in the daily caseload. In the past seven days, between the 6th and the 12th of October, the daily number of cases on average was 4,871. Compared with the previous seven day period from the 29th of September to the 5th of October, the average was 3,753. So within a week, we have registered a 30% increase. In terms of locally acquired cases, in the past seven days, we recorded 4,509 daily cases on average. Comparing to the previous seven-day period, the average was 4, uh, 3,479 cases. Again, we saw a 30% increase. For imported cases, in the past seven days, we recorded on average 362 cases per day. As compared with the previous seven-day period, we recorded 274 cases per day, so that's a 32 percent increase. So be it local or imported cases in the past seven days, uh, we have observed an increase. Imported cases accounted for about 7.5 percent of all confirmed cases in the past seven days. And among the inbound travelers, on average, about 3% of them tested positive at the temporary specimen collection center at the airport. If we take a look at this table here, we see three sets of figures. The first period spans 19th of September to the 25th. And among the inbound travelers, uh, we identify those who tested positive expressing numbers, you see that about 3.1 percent of arrivals tested positive uh, within seven days upon arrival. About 40 percent of these cases tested positive at the airport, and the remaining 60 percent of these cases tested positive in the subsequent seven days. In the second seven-day period from the 26th of September to the 2nd of October, among the arrivals, The percentage testing positive rose to 4.9 percent. Apart from this increase, we also found a corresponding increase in the actual number of cases. That means close to 50 percent of arrivals tested positive at the airport on arrival. And for the remaining 50 percent, they tested positive in the subsequent seven days. As days two, four, and six compulsory testing have not yet been completed, we are unable to provide figures for the current seven-day period. As for the cases picked up at the TSCC at the airport, the case number has also increased. So in the past two weeks, be it the percentage of arrivals tested positive, the actual number of infections, and also the percentage of them testing positive at the airport all recorded an increase. As for the number of deaths, we recorded 52 
death cases in the past seven days. In the previous seven-day period, only 46 were recorded. As for Omicron vari subvariants, in the past seven days, among the local infections, 89.3% belong to BA.5, 4.9% belong to BA.4, and 1.3% recorded only for BA.2.12.1. As of yesterday, the Public Health Laboratory Service conducted genome sequencing for certain imported cases, and altogether 29 XBB cases were detected. 24 tested positive on arrival in Hong Kong, and five other cases tested positive on day two. Most of these cases came from Singapore, India, UK, Thailand, Indonesia, and four other countries, recording one each, including USA, Germany, UAE, and Czech Republic. For residential care homes, in the past week, 24 RCHEs had 40 cases involving residents and six cases involving staff members, and 18 RCHDs recorded altogether 25 cases involving residents. Again, these numbers have shown a slight increase comparing to the previous week. For schools, altogether 3,586 cases recorded involving um, three, 663 schools. Uh, again, an increase comparing to the previous week. Globally, we also keep in view the latest situation. According to data received, um, according to the WHO's data, in the number of infections have slightly increased in the past two weeks. Most of the infections affected the population aged 65 years and above. So as you can see in this chart, there is a slight increase. The number of deaths, however, um, remains on the low side. As for the situation in UK, be it infections, hospital admissions, in the past, three weeks, they've continued to see a rise in number. And ICU admissions remained low, and the number of deaths also remains low. As for our neighboring countries in Singapore, recently, uh, an apparent increase has been recorded. For the seven-day moving average, previously it was below 2,000. Now it's above. Um, about 6,000. And correspondingly, the number of patients hospitalized also increased. And according to information, the percentage of severe cases has remained relatively low. And according to the Singapore authorities, the circulating subvariants include the following, 55% XBB and 24% BA.2.75 and 21% BA.5. And there is no evidence showing that the XBB subvariant could cause more severe illnesses. So in summary, in relation to the epidemic trend in the past seven days, there is an increase in both local and imported cases. And among the imported cases, we've identified an increase in certain subvariant cases, that is XBB. And some in some overseas countries, increase in COVID-19 activities have, has also been recorded. Over to Dr. Lee. Well, during the last week, um, the HA has also seen some volatility in the number of uh, cases. Uh, uh, we have uh, 1,600 patients uh, remaining in hospital, but then for the newly added uh, patients, uh, there was a, an increase in the past week, about 200 uh, new cases uh, every uh, during the past week. Looking at the past week, uh, for those uh, in critical and uh, serious condition, the situation was stable, is about 50 to 60. And, uh, 
in view of the development of the pandemic, public hospitals will continue to uh, restore or resume some of the um, uh, arrangements uh, before the pandemic. And uh, with regard to visiting arrangements, uh, we have also introduced the uh, new arrangements uh, covering all 38 uh, public, public hospitals, uh, critical and non-critical wards. And also starting from next week, on the, uh, starting from the 20th of October, all um, psychiatric hospitals would also be covered. And um, with regard to the arrangement, it would be similar to other psychiatric um, hospitals uh, for low risk uh, patients, including those uh, under 60 and those who have had two jabs of uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, they can have uh, up to one or two hours of visitation and up to three family members can also be registered to visit them. And for those um, who are over 60 and who have not received three jabs, uh, then every week uh, there would be two visits uh, up to one hour and uh, up to five visitors would be allowed. And also, we would also be releasing the details uh, in the press release with regard to the list of hospitals under this arrangement. With regard to um, elective surgery, 91% of that can be arranged. And then for um, endoscopy arrangement, that has also restored to normal. And over, overall, some 80% of uh, the services have been back to normal. And also for public hospitals, uh, in view of the fact that uh, there might be a double attack uh, by the um, uh, by, in, by the seasonal influenza and also pandemic, uh, we also have uh, put in place special arrangements. We have already put in place plans to uh, uh, appropriately adjust the situation, including the North Lantau, um uh, infectious disease uh, treatment center and also the um, AWE. So uh, where there is a need, uh, we can also increase the number of uh, hospital beds. And also we will also be working with uh, private hospitals in order to triage uh, patients to those hospitals in order to ease the pressure on public hospitals. We would also be making use of uh, community quarantine policy uh, facilities so that uh, patients can also uh, use the um, online um, uh, consultation services in order to ease the pressure on public hospitals. We would also call upon um, all of you to uh, take the uh, jab as soon as possible. And also, as a reminder, other than uh, after taking the uh, jab, it would take at least two weeks in order to have the sufficient um, antibodies uh, to fight the disease, and therefore you will have to uh, get the jab as soon as possible in order to get the protection uh, as soon as possible. Next, uh, Under Secretary, well, as far as um, our anti-pandemic uh, policy is concerned, uh, we have uh, been adopting the science-based uh, accurate risk control and also people-friendly approach. Uh, in the past, this is not easy. During the past uh, two years or so, we have all gone through a lot of challenges. And uh, while we are resuming to normalcy, we must uh, make sure that uh, we would not be making U-turns and also uh, doing back doing things uh, back and forth. And therefore, we will have to do it um, in an orderly manner. And also, in terms of the pace, it must be under control in order to ensure that uh, there would be steady recovery. And that would also have to be uh, on the basis that uh, the risk has to be acceptable to the community. In other words, overall speaking, when it comes to the um, the community barrier to the pandemic, uh, the stronger it is, then uh, the pace can become faster. And also in making adjustments uh, to the strategy in fighting the pandemic, the, we have the following considerations. First, um, where adjustment is made, or in other words, if we were to relax um, the uh, restrictions, um, then there might be risk uh, of the um, cases rebounding and the risk has to be um, acceptable so that we would not be uh, forcing the situation to an extreme, whereby the, uh, uh, the entire public health care system would be under pressure. And also, in relaxing the uh, policy, it has to be beneficial to the public. In other words, uh, both people's livelihood and economy would not suffer as a result. And thirdly, we, we would also have to take care of the fact that we have to be consistent in our policy. And therefore, while we um, relax the policies, uh, we have to ensure that there would be consistency across all areas. And uh, because of this, um, uh, uh, under the same um, restriction policy, we will have to relax some while we observe whether or not uh, our system will continue to be able to cope. And um, where possible, we will continue to relax our other related policies. As we have heard from Dr. Ao and Dr. Lee just now, well, uh, on the 26th of September, after we relaxed the um, the um, 
uh, restrictions uh, for incoming visitors, uh, we have already observed several developments. Uh, first, uh, in terms of the number of uh, patients, um, instead of 200 to 200, uh, we have now got uh, two, uh, 300 to, to 400 imported cases. In other words, uh, for people coming back from overseas countries, the confirmed cases uh, has increased uh, from 3% to around 5%. We can also see that uh, before the 26th of September, for the uh, out not rate, um, well, that was uh, below 1, so that was about uh, 0.69, and now it has already gone up to over 1. It means that, uh, well, after one person is infected, uh, he'll be infecting more than one person. And also, if you look at the international trend, Dr. Ao also uh, analyzed that uh, for us. Um, well, the situation is rather volatile. Given the fact that we have also seen some new subvariants, uh, we cannot, we must not be complacent when it comes to relaxing our, our restrictions. Looking at uh, our neighboring countries or places like Singapore, now they have got uh, up to 10,000 cases a day, even though the uh, situation is not serious because the number of serious cases is not that high. But then there is still an increase in terms of the number of uh, hospitalization, and therefore we would also have to make sure that our public health care system can cope. And also the WHO and also the uh, CDC in Europe, they have also uh, issued a joint statement. That is, um, they are suggesting that um, they are now uh, facing another wave of uh, um, uh, new cases. And during the past week, there was an increase by some 8%. In other words, uh, they are also calling upon people to take the vaccination as well as the uh, flu jab as soon as possible. Looking at the local situation, well, yes, so we have not seen a substantial increase in the number of cases, and also the uh, HA is still able to cope with its current situation. So given the situation, we are also attempting to find some room so that we can cautiously relax some of the um, restrictions. At the same time, we would also have to continue to observe the developments to see if there is further room for relaxation. The SAR government has decided that uh, in the next uh, cycle, that is starting from the 20th of October to the 2nd of November in 2022, we will appropriately relax the following uh, community distance or social distancing measures. First, um, at catering establishments, uh, pubs, uh, and also night pubs uh, and nightclubs, uh, cinemas, uh, museums, and also uh, clubhouses, hotels guest houses, uh, meeting rooms, conference rooms, and activity rooms uh, where there are live performances and dancing activities that would be permitted. The premise is that uh, the performers would have to undergo regular testing. In other words, they will have to undergo at least uh, two PCR tests within a seven-day period. And also on the day of performance and also rehearsals, for those are going into the premises, they would also have to undergo the RAT test. And the relevant uh, performers would also have to uh, wear a face mask as far as possible, and they would also have to keep a, an appropriate distance uh, with the audience and also the viewers. And for those who are not doing the performance, they would also have to make sure that they wear face masks at all times. Another relaxation is that um, in the outdoor area of uh, theme parks, uh, um, eating would be permitted. Thirdly, the SAR government is actively considering that uh, for those who are gathering in public places, uh, the restriction would be relaxed to up to 12. And that has to do with uh, uh, CAP 599G's uh, uh, amendment. So once the law is amended and after we have gone through the process, we will be reconfirming that with you. Well, in the um, international arena, we cannot say that um, we have a lot of optimism about the development of the uh, of COVID, but then as far as possible, we are already trying our best uh, to relax the restrictions, and we are continuing to observe the developments uh, so that uh, we will look at uh, the development of the, the pandemic and also the effectiveness of our measures. Once, if, uh, well, uh, once every two weeks, we will review the situation. If the situation continues to be stable, then we will orderly uh, relax uh, the measures. Hold on. Meanwhile, we are aware of the concerns in the community about medical exemption certificates for COVID-19 vaccines, and that certain um, persons may not get a medical exemption certificate issued by doctors. I'd like to explain that 
for doctors to issue medical exemption certificates for COVID jabs or for sick leave certificates or proof of disability, a doctor must also exercise clinical judgment following assessment clinically before deciding whether the person is suitable. This is this has to do with the doctor's professional uh, conduct. In fact, in the code of practice for registered medical practitioners in Hong Kong, the Medical Council of Hong Kong sets out how a doctor's professional status should not be abused. In other words, misleading instruments or certificates should not be issued. And it also sets out very clearly that in issuing these documents, it should be true and accurate, and a doctor must be careful in avoiding uh, putting down anything that has not been verified in the certificate. And the certificate should only be issued after following these steps with prudence. So I'd like to clarify this point, and uh, perhaps I'll stop here. I'll be happy to take questions. The floor is open. Please introduce the media outlet you represent before you speak and try to uh, ask succinct questions only. Any questions? This lady at the back. I'm from Cable. Good afternoon. About medical exemption certificates under Secretary, in relation to the interim injunction order issued by the Court of First Instance, what is your response? And there are news that starting next Tuesday, a vac seen pass exemption um, code will be issued to persons uh, currently holding the such medical exemption certificates and that private clinics uh, will no longer be eligible for issuing exemption certificates. Next about uh, subvariance BA.2.75 and also um, the other subvariants, uh, what is the, ch the chance of having age major outbreaks? Uh, because of heightened immune escape capability, uh, is it possible that these subvariants will become the mainstream in circulation in Hong Kong? About, and about these two subvariants, um, they are mostly detected in imported cases. Uh, is it? Do we have um, room to relax or tighten the measures? Will we be able to control the risk? And about relaxing the group gathering. Uh, Person, lim person limit to 12. Uh, can you explain the justification since you've just explained that um, there is an increase in the number of cases? First, on medical exemption certificates, when the High Court handed down the interim injunction order, the government already suspended the arrangements to refuse to accept the medical certi exemption certificates issued by the seven doctors. Since it is now in um, subjudice, I'm afraid I cannot comment on it. Now, can you repeat the next question, um, the latter part of your question about the exemption certificates, uh, about issuing um, an exemption certificate? to be put on the vaccine pass. Well, I'll answer, I'll give the floor to Dr. Al to answer the question on subvariants first. Locally, we keep in view local infections as well as imported cases. We check the uh, sublineages of the cases and, ex and explain just now. At the moment, BA.5 constitutes the majority of local infections, over 90%. The remaining subvariants are BA.4 and BA.2, and we conduct analysis uh, on these cases, basically BA.2, 0.4, 0.5, and we also conduct uh, genome sequencing and uh, for suspected new subvariants. The same applies to imported cases. All specimens collected at the airport and specimens collected on days two, four, and six in the community will be subject to um, analysis. We are concerned about imported cases because there is a higher chance of new subvariants being identified, so there is a greater risk. We want to identify these cases as quickly as possible. 
and for arrivals, we'd like to keep track of the news of variance and the percentage um, as per the total cases. As for the subvariance BA. 0.2.75 and XBB and other new subvariants emerging. For example, in the US, we have BA.4.6. In the UK, we have BA.2.1. And in other places, BF.4. These are new subvariants um, mutated from BA.5 and 0.4 subvariants. Since, since these are new subvariants, the transmissibility may be higher, and because of um, mutations, there may be immune escape. In other words, the um, immunity generated uh, in the population may not be as effective in guarding against these subvariants. As more cases belong to these subvariants, search in other places in the world, there would be a higher chance of these cases being detected in Hong Kong as well. Our concern is whether these subvariants would cause more severe illnesses and hospital admissions. Now, for XBB, BA.2.75, these new subvariants at the moment uh, do not seem to be causing more severe illnesses or hospital admissions. As for tightening of measures for arrivals, it's only been three weeks since the introduction of zero plus three arrangements. Like Dr. Al said, more time is needed to observe the situation, especially whether new subvariant cases would be imported into Hong Kong, um, causing um, wide circulation and affecting the public health care system. Apart from severe cases and death cases, we're also concerned about hospital admissions. We don't want our services to reach capacity because of a surge in the number of cases and for other patients not being able to receive our services. As for consideration of relaxing the measures further, our major consideration is that we'd like to take an orderly and gradual approach in relaxing these measures, especially uh, we need to observe the epidemic situation in the community. When circumstances permit, we'd like to gradually relax the measures as well. Last time, we had one round of relaxation, and we relaxed, uh, for example, the number of persons around a table in catering establishments and bars. And as appropriate, we may consider further relaxing um, social distancing measures for these premises. Another factor is um, fatigue among the public. We have been fighting the epidemic for more than two years. So when certain, uh, when circumstances permit, without compromising our anti-epidemic effort, we'd like to continue on the path to normalcy. Next, please limit yourself to two questions. Please be as succinct as possible. This lady in white on the right-hand side. I'm from Hong Kong O One. I have three. Um, I have a number of questions. First, the in the past seven days, the number of imported cases have increased by 30 um, percent. What is your comment? Second, according to many experts, we only have um, very minor uh, illnesses uh, in recent cases, so uh, there is uh, room for further relaxing the measures. Um, apart from what you've just mentioned, will there be major changes to the policy? Third point about the concentration of meloid um, doses uh, cases in Cham Shui Po, and what is your assessment of um, the uh, situation of uh, meliodosis infection? Well, during the past uh, seven days, if you look at the number of uh, cases, uh, there was um, an increase by some 30 percent. So how come, uh, well, on the first day of arrival, there was already 30 percent of um, infection? Because uh, when we uh, relax the restriction, we already um, waive the requirement to take the PCR test uh, before arriving in Hong Kong. So instead of that, uh, we would require an RAT test. Uh, given the fact that uh, RA, uh, PCR test would be a lot more accurate uh, than the RAT test, uh, that's why. Well, for people who 
might have just uh, taken the RAT test without the PCR test, that uh, they might have been infected, and as a result, uh, they might still carry the virus. But then, uh, fortunately, we still have the um, the PCR test at the TSCC, and therefore we have been able to catch uh, most of these cases. As to whether or not uh, there would be further relaxation, as far as uh, arrivals are concerned, uh, we will have to observe the situation. And if the situation continues to uh, remain steady, then uh, we will have room for further relaxation. The principle is that uh, economy and people's livelihood should not be seriously affected. Uh, and secondly, after the relaxation with regard to the healthcare system and also on the volatility of the pandemic, there would not be further or aggravated fluctuation, and therefore we, we will have room to do that. Uh, and therefore, where the situation is stable, we will consider that. With regard to the uh, situation concerning melio, melioidosis, that loidosis, uh, I'll defer to Dr. Au. Well, um, in the past, uh, you might not have heard about this. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a bacterial infection. And in Hong Kong, in the past, uh, we did have uh, such cases. It's uh, very much an endemic, and we already had recorded such cases in the past. Uh, and according to some researchers, uh, such a bacteria can be found in the soil and sewage um, in the local environment. And this bacteria would attack mostly, well, health uh, compromised uh, people or people with um, uh, low immunity or with uh, chronic diseases. and. Uh, we received uh, reports uh, from the uh, Kowloon West uh, cluster that 15 uh, meliodosis uh, cases were recorded, and we conducted some initial investigation, and we found out that uh, mostly they were people living in Shamshui Po, and we also conducted some uh, epidemiological um, uh, investigation, and we also collected more comprehensive data from Shum Shui Po. We noticed that uh, a total of uh, 29 such cases have been recorded in Hong Kong. Compared to last year, a total of 17 cases were recorded last year. And as I said, this um, um, disease uh, is very much uh, an endemic, and uh, every year we have uh, seen such cases. And if you look at uh, the situation between 2017 to 2021, on average, uh, there were about 10 cases recorded. And we are also concerned that uh, recently, in a particular district uh, like uh, Sham Shui Po, there might be a cluster of cases. And therefore, we have conducted uh, epidemiological uh, investigation, and we found out that uh, the situation were very similar to what we found in the past. Uh, mostly, the patients uh, were immunity-compromised uh, persons or people with uh, chronic diseases, and the, age, and the median age was about 70, and uh, they have uh, some um, inherent diseases, uh, and uh, they might also have uh, suffered from uh, pneumonia uh, at the point of uh, hospitalization. And we have also looked at the uh, risk factors and whether or not there was uh, any epidemiological links uh, between the patients. Apparently, we haven't found that uh, because they, are, they were living in different buildings. The only thing is that they mainly uh, lived in Sham Shui Po, that's the same district. But then we have uh, initially uh, ruled out some uh, 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 common uh, factors. For example, they might not, ha uh, they have not been to the same uh, eatery, or they have not been to the same premises or location. So apparently, according to our initial judgment, in the uh, district, they might have come into contact with some contaminated uh, environmental. Uh, uh, species because uh, mostly it can be found uh, in soil and therefore after uh, torren uh, torrential downpour or after um, uh, uh, heavy rain, um, that might be found. Um, the virus or uh, the bacteria can be found in the soil. So we will continue to uh, observe closely. So um, the person in red. Yes, I'm from Ming Pao Daily. Well, for the uh, subvariants. I'd like to ask Dr. Au. Recently, the DFH announced that uh, for the subvariants announced that uh, they would have to be tested positive, and then after a week, they would then be found that um, it's a subvariant, and therefore for um, BA 2.75 uh, and XBB, have they already gone into the community, and what's the risk? And also, how far would that affect our um, anti uh, pandemic measures? And also, with regard to XBB subvariant, uh, do you have uh, tests uh, that can yield results uh, faster? And also for the social distancing measures, just now you said that uh, these measures can only be relaxed uh, 
on a step-by-step -step basis in order to ease the pressure on the uh, public health care system. Does that mean that uh, the administration will not be able to give us a road map as to when you can uh, fully relax those measures and then for the catering industry, they would uh, be at a loss as to what to do. And also for the r not ratio, that has already gone up to over one recently. So does it mean that uh, by relaxing the measures, uh, actually the r not ratio will already go up to beyond uh, one? Does that mean that um, that's a result of the relaxation? And earlier on, uh, Professor Lowe said that, uh, well, r not rate has to be kept uh, below one, and uh, the target has already been um, abandoned. Is that the case? Okay, Dr. Ao, on the issue of uh, subvariants. Thank you. With regard to the subvariants, well, there are new subvariants uh, that have been uh, recently found, uh, and um, they were found in overseas countries, and then they have uh, been found in uh, Hong Kong as well. And then we will have to uh, do laboratory tests before we can identify them, and therefore, the uh, uh, the public laboratory will be conducting uh, further tests uh, whenever there are uh, new subvariants are found. Uh, we will continue to uh, carry out the steep in order to find out if there are. Uh, quick test to identify such uh, suspected uh, subvariants so that we'd be able to act more quickly. And uh, to use the um, conventional uh, whole genome uh, sequencing um, uh, procedures, uh, that would take more time. And therefore, we have already enhanced our laboratory uh, investigation capacity. And therefore, for those uh, subvariants that are of uh, concern, then we will step up the uh, process so that we'd be able to uh, do the surveillance tests around the clock. For example, recently um, we have um, got some 23 new XBB cases uh, today, and uh, the arrival data was uh, the last uh, couple of days. In other words, uh, we have been able to uh, make sure that uh, as soon as the, our laboratory receives uh, the samples, uh, they'd be able to get the result uh, very quickly. So that's uh, for surveillance purposes, so that we'd be able to tell that uh, for the imported cases mostly, they are of a particular subvariant. And then we'll be able to take appropriate measures to ensure that um, there would not be community spread of the new subvariant, so that uh, they would get the red code, and then they would not be able to go around in the community. All right, um, on the uh, road map, I believe that uh, no country or no place uh, can tell you specifically as to when they can relax the uh, measures on a particular date because uh, the wisest way to go is to look at the situation and then adjust your policy accordingly. And of course, uh, you don't want to go round and round uh, because you don't want to open your border and then close it again because the loss would be even more tremendous. That's the reason why, if you look at the policy on returning to normalcy, that's the way we go about it. Uh, that is, uh, we'd like to look at the situation and then relax it gradually. We don't want to see a rebound uh, in a number of cases, and then we will have to go back to our earlier uh, restrictions, uh, because we want people to go back to normal life. Regarding the r not rate, uh, if it's um, in excess of one, then uh, does that mean that uh, it's a problem? Well, in fact, uh, in any measures or policies, uh, we have still got um, imported uh, cases, and therefore we are fully aware of the fact that there might be um, uh, a chance or risk uh, that uh, the number of cases would go up. So that's the reason why we have to be very cautious at every step of the way to ensure that uh, there would not be too many new subvariants and also the number of imported cases would still be under control and so on and so forth. But then uh, what I'd like to say most uh, is that, um, well, um, to reduce the r not ratio to below one would rely very heavily on the cooperation of the community. I understand that you have had a hard time in the past two or so years. Uh, if you look at international literature, well, the, re the fact that they are able to reduce the r not ratio to below one, that would rely on uh, the entire communities uh, working together so that would be able to, uh, to um, increase the overall immunity. Because if the immunity is high, then the spread would be limited. Uh, so how can we build this barrier? Well, I earnestly urge you to uh, take the vaccination. And for those who haven't had uh, the third jab, please go and take the third jab as soon as possible. Now the influenza season is coming. So you would also, you would also be advised uh, to take the flu jab. Next uh, English question, please. 
Hello from RTHK. Uh, medical experts said the new subvariant XBB.1 may become the dominant strain in Hong Kong. So how worrying is this and how would you assess the risk? That's the first question. And secondly, how would you assess the risk of more people traveling now and coming for the upcoming high profile international summits and events? And is there room for further easing of COVID rules like dropping the mask mandates for outdoors? And why do authorities only allow eating at theme parks but not extend it more? And is there any scientific basis behind extending the public gathering limits from 4 to 12? Thank you. Okay, so maybe Dr. L first handle the um, variant, the question on variants. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, according to preliminary evidence, uh, we know that SBB is a, a new subvariant of BA.2, and there is uh, some scientific evidence showing that uh, it has uh, some mutations which might lead to increased immune escape, so causing the this the uh, virus, this subvariant virus to be more transmissible, and will infect persons who have uh, partial immunity. So uh, this is there is a risk that if this subvariant is imported into Hong Kong, there is a risk for replacing the PA.5 uh, currently circulating in the local community. We will closely monitor the situation. And according to overseas experience, especially the Singapore experience, whenever, when this uh, subvariant, the proportion is increasing, there will also be an increase in the uh, proportion of reinfection and also uh, increase in the absolute number of cases. But however, However, there is so far there is no scientific evidence showing that this type of sub new subvariant has an increased disease severity or causing a more severe disease once infected. Uh, likely, it is similar to the previous uh, subvariants such as PA.5, PA.4, PA etc. Okay. Concerning the risk assessment for increasing you know the for relaxing the border border restrictions and also increasing the travel inbound inbound travelers um, uh, we expect there will be increases in number of positive cases after the relaxations of the inbound traveler uh, or, or relaxation of the of the border restriction uh, so that's why uh, we emphasize very much on the timely and uh, catch up of the positive cases once the inbound travelers enter Hong Kong. So on day zero, why we will have a PCR test is actually want to capture as many and possible positive cases before the travelers actually entered into the community of the Hong Kong. And how about a submit? Submit is an a <clears throat> the financial submit is another issue. First of all, the number of travelers through through the uh, submit is not huge. It's a limited number of people. And there are special measures actually to, to, and I would say it's very stringent measures to make sure that the risk could be controlled, the risk of infection could be controlled. And, and a special exemption has to be seeked, um, has to be discussed within the government before basically financial submit could be allowed to happen in Hong Kong. So the government actually has um, introduced quite stringent measures to ensure that the risk of infections through the summit is minimal. So I would say the I would say this actually the risk is controlled for this particular event. And concerning the question about dropping the face mask or any scientific basis for four people gathering versus twelve people gathering. Um, I would say this is actually a fundamental principle of public health measures. Once there's an outbreak or a pandemic or infectious disease, that kind of things, the first one is actually to limit the spread. So limit the number of people gathered together is one of the useful measures to limit the spread of the disease. Once the disease is controlled or, or the immunity of the public is kind of guaranteed, basically you can slowly release you know, the, the limitations of number of people in gathering. But how quick it should be or what number it should be I think it's actually tied into the, the same principle of observing the effect of each relaxation of measures. And when you say when you see the relaxation of measures, um, the risk of infections could be controlled, and there will be space to further relax. But when we relax some measures, and then suddenly there's a big rebound, maybe then we have to hesitate or we slow down the slow down the relaxation. 
I guess this is the basic principle of public health um, in ensuring the safety and health and health of the of the populations in Hong Kong. I'm now eating. Sorry. And why do authorities only allow eating at theme parks but not uh, easing it to more places? Oh, oh this is the same principles uh, when we talk about uh, the government take the principles uh, in relaxations of the um, anti-epidemic uh, anti measures. That is, <clears throat> we want to slowly introduce and gradually relax the, all, the, all these restrictions in a by basically titrating the risk that we, have, we are going to face. So the first step probably will be relaxation of some parts or, of, the, of the measures. And if the condition is in control, if the risk is not big, basically we can actually slowly relax to the other areas. So this is a step-by-step -step approach, a gradual approach. Two more questions. On the right-hand side, this gentleman. I'm from AM730. About medical exemption certificates, the Undersecretary just now referred to the code of practice applicable to medical practitioners, but it's heard that some doctors simply refuse to sign the certificates, even though they also agree the patients may not be suitable to be jabbed. And uh, would, what is your take on this? And would there be any um, stance taken by the government? And about taking body temperature using Leave Home Safe app, uh, how effective are these measures? Uh, when will they be scrapped for these establishments? PCR tests are required for inbound travelers, but there are news that Inbound travelers are deterred because they are afraid once they test positive via PCR, uh, they may be subject to uh, isolation. Does it mean that uh, the, the boundary but they will not be opened up uh, to the full? Now, first to answer your question on the medical exemption certificates. After a doctor assesses a patient's condition, if the doctor believes that the certificate should be issued since the patient is suitable uh, to be exempted, then the certificate should be issued and vice versa. A doctor would write up notes setting out in detail th the consultation as well as the doctor's assessment on the patient. We have trust in our doctors. And if we have only one avenue for issuing certificates, then we are taking away a doctor's duty in making clinical assessment on patients and issuing exemption certificates. I believe the public um, still have faith in our doctors. As per your other question about relaxing uh, other measures, we understand that uh, the public are keen to resume normal activities. But as I've explained just now, we need to take things step by step so that it will be safe for our community. Well, we need to give, for example, um, consideration first to the major anti-epidemic uh, measures. As for the PCR testing requirement, whether it's a deterrence for inbound travelers, as mentioned just now, on the day of arrival, we are able to pick out 3% of all imported cases at the airport, and tests can be conducted to identify possible variants. At the moment, around the world, there are um, quite a number of subvariants, and uh, around the world, and uh, it's not the right time to spare this uh, testing re test and hold re um, requirement. So there is a need to uh, continue with this uh, PCR testing requirement. Last question. Street doctors, um, good afternoon. I'm from TVB. I'd like to look at the scheduled uh, premises. Well, for pubs, um, well, um, there was there have been some relaxation, but then according to the trade, the uh, business hours should also be relaxed. But then. Uh, 
Yes, um, you still haven't announced that they can extend their business hours. Why? And also for the um, uh, policy on the arrivals, you said that um, based on uh, different uh, criteria, you would be doing that on a gradual uh, basis. Uh, yes, uh, we have seen some increase uh, in the number of uh, imported cases. Does that mean that we will not be able to implement zero plus zero yet? Uh, and also, uh, given the fact that uh, there has been an increase on the number of imported cases, uh, so uh, does that mean that uh, in the next uh, few weeks, the number of cases will go up more rapidly? And also on the outdoor uh, dining um, arrangement. Well, last week um, you said that uh, you're considering whether or not uh, well, there might not be a need uh, for people to wear face masks when they're outdoor. And also if you're able to put such arrangements in place uh, so that uh, for people uh, um, uh, uh, consuming food um, in the outdoor area of theme parks, uh, then why are they required to wear face masks? And also for the um, children's uh, versions of um, Beyond Tech um, Jap. Uh, well, yesterday there was announcement that uh, that would be uh, approved. Uh, so when can that be used in Hong Kong? Thank you. Well, there is um, a basket of uh, questions. I'll answer the last one uh, first. Um, well, that's uh, the kids' version for uh, by Beyond Tech. Uh, yes, uh, approval has been given, and um, we are now uh, negotiating with the um, pharmaceutical company, and uh, we will be making announcements uh, as soon as possible. With regard to the basket of um, anti-pandemic measures as to when we can relax what, well, that goes back to the earlier principle that I mentioned. That is, uh, is the pandemic situation stable in Hong Kong, and if the number continues to go down, and if the situation is stable, then I'm sure there would be a bigger chance that we can relax it further. But then if the situation is now plateauing or if it's going up, then of course we will have to be more cautious. We will have to monitor the situation more closely and we will have to take a smaller step at a time. But then uh, you're right, uh, there, are, there are more people uh, traveling abroad um, because uh, under the zero plus three policy, more people are traveling. But then I'd also like to remind those uh, who are um, planning to travel. Then you would also have to make sure that uh, you have already taken the vaccination and the record has to be complete before you travel. Because uh, number one, when you're in the an overseas country, if you're sick, then that would be um, problematic. And also the overseas situation is still very um, volatile and therefore you will have to take the jab in order to protect yourself. That's for your personal good and also personal safety. That's our recommendation. So we do call upon those uh, who would like to travel. Please take the jab and uh, the best thing is to take the flu jab as well. All right. Thank you for attending today's press conference. Thank you.